All right, we're still talking about substitution to solve systems, and this is part C, consistent and inconsistent systems. Now, we have seen that sometimes there can be one answer if we have a linear system and it's just crossing in one line. Sometimes there can be two answers. Sometimes there can be infinite answers. And sometimes there can be absolutely no answers whatsoever to the system. Okay? Now, if you have a consistent system, the word consistent means there will be an answer or more. Inconsistent systems do not have answers. So let's take a look at examples of each. All right, here we go. Here's our system. Two linear equations. We want to see whether they cross in a point, uh, in which case there'd be one solution, or who knows, maybe they'll be right on top of each other. Who, kn who knows? Maybe there won't be any solution at all, in which case they'd be parallel to each other. All right, let's see. Okay, let's get a different color. Let's try pink. All right, right now we know that x is equal to this. So if I take that and substitute it down in here into the second equation, I'll get everything written in terms of y, and then I can solve for y. All right, so let's do the substitution step. This will turn into substituting this value for x into the second equation. We will get 3 times the quantity, 3 minus 2y, close quantity, plus 6 times y is equal to 6. All right, now it's one big, long, ugly equation in terms of y. Let's go ahead and distribute the 3, and we will get 9 minus 6y plus 6y is equal to 6. Uh-oh, something's happened here. Hmm, negative 6y, positive 6y, those add to 0, and you're left with 9 is equal to 6. And that's just blatantly false. That's not true at all. So 9 is not equal to 6. So it turns out that we are looking at a system that can't be solved. Because when we went ahead and, and tried to solve it algebraically, we came up with a false statement. All the variables dropped out, and we were left with a false statement. So there is no solution. And we say it's inconsistent. Consistent. And what it would look like graphically is the graph on this is actually going to look like two parallel lines. All right. Notice, whenever you have parallel lines, they do not share any points in common. So anytime that that happens, your algebraic answer is always going to turn out to be inconsistent. The graph on this is actually going to look like two parallel lines. All right. Notice, whenever you have parallel lines, they do not share any points in common. So anytime that that happens, your algebraic answer is always going to turn out to be inconsistent. Here's another one. Solve the system y equals 6 minus x over 6 and y equals x over 3 plus 2y equals 12. Now both of these are going to be linear because we don't have any second powers or third powers or division by variables. So we're trying to see, you know, is this thing going to have answers or not? All right, we know what y is equal to. So let's take this quantity and substitute it down into the second equation where we see the y. And the resulting equation is going to look like x over 3 plus 2 times the quantity 6 minus x over 6, close quantity, and all that will be equal to 12. All right, let's now go ahead and distribute the 2 and then see if we can clean it up a bit. x over 3 plus 2 times 6 is 12, then 2 times the opposite of x over, okay, minus x over 6 is 2x 
over 6, and that's all equal to 12. Well, 2x over 6, that'll just reduce to 1 -third. And you know what? You've got a 1 -third here as well. Hmm. All right, let's see here. So we're looking at x over 3 plus 12 minus, basically, 2 goes into 6 one, uh, 3 times. Okay, so this can be written as 1 times x, which is just x over 3, and that's all equal to 12. This is just the re reduced form of this without the 1 in the numerator. Uh-oh, look at this. Here we have x over 3. Here we have, well, we could even write this as plus the opposite. Plus the opposite of x over 3. Dang it, look. Those guys are going to add to 0, and I'm going to be left with 12 is equal to 12. That, again, is a special case. The variables have completely dropped out. But this time, we are left with a true statement. This is true. So that means, hmm, these two, actually, what this means is these two equations are describing the same line. They look different, but they are describing the same line. Every x that works in this one, every x and y that works in the first equation is also going to work in the second equation. Hmm. Now, graphically, something like that look like. Well, let's take a look. If you pop this into your graphing calculator, in fact, that's a really pretty good idea. You guys go ahead, pop that into your graphing calculator. I'll wait for a moment. It's the strangest thing. You're going to get something that looks like this. There will just be one line, one line graphed, and you're going to think that your calculator has made a mistake. But it hasn't. Remember what I said. These two equations are describing the same line. Every point that works in this equation also works in this equation. And we know that because we, when we did the algebra, the variables dropped out and we were left with a true statement. So, these lines are literally right on top of each other. Okay, this is a consistent system with infinite solutions.